Hi, my name is Allison Satter. I work in the field of special education. I teach classes and develop products to support inclusive education in schools. Hi, uh, my name is Hunter Finch and I'm a graduate student at the University of Kansas, uh, currently enrolled in the Higher Education Administration program. Um, I received my undergraduate degree uh, from KU in sociology. My name is Jordan Hill. I am a sophomore in college and I am also a student athlete, plays football at Highland Community College. My name is Mike Bannon. Um, I'm a GTA up at KU um, and I am going to answer questions, the interview questions about white privilege. White privilege is a term for societal privileges that benefit people identified as white in Western countries, beyond what is commonly experienced by non-white people under the same social, political, or economic circumstances. Simple things as walking in a store, walking past somebody and they grip their purse, or um, automatically assume that you know, they see you walking towards their car and they lock their doors. You know, things like that. Um, I haven't personally experienced someone using it uh, to their advantage towards me. Mm -hmm. um, my father um, went through a big issue um, when he was working um, for the government. He was a uh, president of a union. And election time came and um, he had to run against a white woman mm -hmm. and um, she saw it necessary to kind of like go and get information and dig and use different things like against him right um, she turned a lot of people against him um, made up lies and stories and I mean naturally they believed everything she said you know so it kind of made a really bad work workspace for him, yeah. um, forced him into retirement. I'm not going to say the company, but uh, another time when I was looking for a job, they told me in no uncertain terms that, uh, you know, I'm not going to get the job because I'm black. Um, I've been at some social gatherings that, you know, I've literally been told to leave, you know, just because I'm black along with a couple of other people that I was with. The moment where I noticed it was super, super obvious, <laughs> it's actually really funny. Um, I went to Silver Dollar City with my family and have you ever been to Silver Dollar City? Have you noticed what it's like? It's like, it's like all these people in like period costumes, it's like old time America. And the first thing that my dad says when we walk in is to me and my sister, you, gr you girls would never be able to get a job here. <laughs> and he's right, we would stick out like a sore thumb. It'd be, it'd be really weird to have like these Korean girls wandering around wearing like a little bonnet and like a little colonial America dress, like. Peggy McIntosh talks about white privilege and how whites are carefully taught not um, to recognize it. But she also talks about how we all carry around this invisible knapsack of privileges and um, even though we're taught not to recognize them, we still use them. I've actually gone through various stages when it comes to white privilege uh, or an understanding just of privilege in general. Um, when I was in college, uh, I was oblivious to this concept. Um, and I think I actually was more than oblivious. I think I was hostile to the concept. Um, I grew up in a conservative home and, um, you know, had a lot of that uh, upbringing. Uh, and I, as an undergrad, I think I believed pretty strongly that uh, a lot of the sort of political correctness and multiculturalism, um, while I uh, agreed with the, the um, sentiment behind it, I felt that often it uh, was used as an excuse uh, to justify, uh, you know, apathy or lack of attitude or lack of trying. And um, I had that belief for quite a long time uh, until I went and taught at Northeast High School in Kansas City, Missouri. 
and it completely changed my worldview. Um, I had always had an understanding that you know the things were unequal and um, you know socioeconomics mattered and all those things, but um, I hadn't really ever been uh, exposed to it in a way that I was exposed to it when I was at Northeast. Um, and what I saw in Northeast is I saw a lot of very earnest people of multiple races, classes, um, trying their hardest to do the right thing in very difficult situations. And that it was not a matter of uh, lack of willpower or uh, lack of effort or concern, um, but that the cards were stacked against people in very significant ways. I consider myself really successful in my career, um, but I don't think it's because I work harder than other people who are less fortunate than me. I do work hard, but I think you could very easily find people who work a lot harder than I do, but are less educated and make less money than I do. And I think that's in large part because I had easier access to education and opportunities that I was able to take advantage of. And I know that not everyone has that same level of access, even if they work hard. So for me, white privilege is about acknowledging that. It's about recognizing that different people have different access to success and acknowledging that race plays a role in that, especially when you consider that African-American children in this country are three times more likely than Caucasian children to live in poverty. There's media in our TV shows. Mm -hmm. We, there's no TV shows out there now that empower the other race. It's, you know, if you are on a TV show, it's because you're on a reality show and you're throwing chairs at each other or you're hoes or you're sleeping with five different men or, um, you know, normally you don't really have a TV show where there is a good, solid black family or Hispanic family or anything like that. And if there is, those shows don't last very long. Mm -hmm. It's per my, a lot of the shows that you have is all um, with... Um, the white people like kind of in charge like Grey's Anatomy like that's a whole I, mean, I think there's like two colored people on that whole show <laughs> and it's not I mean it's not yeah. even you know a, a positive um, line either um, or even like Empire like mm. why does why can't he just be in charge of a record company without, without being having a criminal uh, yes without having a past like that or drugs or alcohol or sleeping with all these women or guns or anything like that because that's not how every black person is right Teachers can and should challenge the values of white privilege instead of promote the values of self-love. If I see something that's unjust, if I see something that I think someone's being treated unfairly due to said race, sex, sexual orientation, something along those lines, I, it's, a, it, it's, it's, you know, it's part of my responsibility to say something. Not in a, like a savior, messianic complex, you know, where I'm going to, the great white hope is going to step up and defend someone. No, it's, it's, part, it's just out of a certain, uh, a basic act of, of fairness and justice to someone that is being treated unfairly because of a lack of privilege. And so, because with that privilege comes that responsibility to then take the privilege and, and name it, right? And say, look, this is what it is. This is what's happening. Look at these studies. Look at these reports. Look at these articles. It's clear that this is happening. And so the first aspect is naming it and, and being aware of it and, and, you know, being uncomfortable with it and recognizing that, okay, I have a role to play. I know I'm just a regular guy. I, you know, I'm not the president. I don't have, I'm not a senator. I don't make these public policies, but I can vote people in who, who do. I think that the first step is um, we've got to do better. And when I say we, I'm talking about African Americans mm -hmm. have got to do better at representing ourselves in a better light. Mm -hmm. Because I think that, um, like you said, when things happen, the news broadcasted, and we know that we should know that by now. Mm -hmm. So when you do something, and you know that it's gonna, you know that it's gonna be talked about all around the world. Everybody's gonna hear about it. And for some people, it's incredibly hard to succeed, and other people, it's much easier to succeed. And so, with that, for the people that it's much easier to succeed, we need to change those laws, those policies, those people that put them in, in place, recognize them, own them, and change them to create a society that is more just, that is more representative, that is more fair, and that is more equal for everyone.